Hello and welcome back to the Turnstile. My name's Harry and this is my recap on the last couple of games for Arsenal. Obviously I didn't put anything out after the Manchester City game. Uh, a mixture of it being midweek, quite difficult to record and the result itself being quite a hard one to take. Now with the, the City game, very disappointing. I can't say that I'm, I'm surprised by the result itself. I think most Arsenal fans saw what was coming, especially with Saliba being out, Rob Holding stepping in. I think we all knew what was coming in, in that game. But I think what was a surprise for most of us was the performance that was actually put in on that day. Very, very weak. It looked like men versus boys out there. And I think the age of the team, it really started to, to show and it was evident on the pitch. The confidence, how we were dealing with the pressure. It was all a bit of a build-up. I think we saw it last year as well. When there is a lot of media coverage over the games, that outside intensity starts to rise. I think this Arsenal team, they, they seem to crack under the pressure a little bit. Now, hopefully it is because of their age and it won't be something that continues in the long term. But we do need to see some sort of change moving forward. We need to see those games where it's a big crunch game. People are talking about it being one of the biggest games in the last four or five years, we need to see one of those go our way. Because at the minute, it seems that whenever it comes to that crunch time, we seem to, to fade away a little bit. I feel bad for Rob Holding. Um, I don't think he had a great game personally, but I think he was well out of his depth. I don't think that he is a top-level Premier League centre-back. I think he could go and do a job at another team, someone like Everton or Wolves. He might be able to, to provide something there. But I think in terms of a, a title-challenging team, he's not the guy that you want to come in as a replacement. I think with Manchester City, nobody can really have too many complaints. It's, it was men against boys, like I said before. That team is an absolute juggernaut. When you think over the last few years, they took Liverpool up to, to 97 points and Liverpool only lost one game all year. Um, they still didn't win a Premier League title. To be able to beat this Manchester City team, you have to be nigh on perfect. Coming into the Chelsea game, though, we saw a completely different Arsenal side. When we were travelling up to the game, there was um, an air of anticipation almost. There was a lot of tickets that were on ticket exchange. All the way through this season, it's been impossible to, to get tickets to go, and that's obviously because we're winning. I think a lot of people sort of hung their hats up now, given up on it, um, which is disappointing to see in a way, but... You can, you can understand the frustration at the same time. We thought that if it didn't go our way against this Chelsea team, that the atmosphere in the stadium could turn quite toxic very fast, almost slipping into that, that old Arsenal era. Fans turning on each other, turning against the team. But the boys turn up, they put in a great performance against a Chelsea team that are in the mud at the moment. I'm struggling to see what's going on there because they spent so much money they brought in a lot of very good players, people like Raheem Sterling, um, that Madueke, Mudrik, um, Enzo in midfield. But it just doesn't seem to be clicking at all. Looking at the remaining fixtures that Chelsea have, I can't see where they pick up points between now and the end of the season. But in terms of Arsenal, we started strong. Obviously, we saw Kivior come in for his first Premier League start, and I think he, he did well. There wasn't too much for him to do, granted. But the stuff that he did do, he, he did effectively. I think a huge concern from the game is obviously the, the Gabriel injury. It didn't look too serious at the time, but he went down time and time again. And it makes me think that it might be something a little bit more serious. And if we were to lose him and we happen to play Kivior and Rob Holding, then it looks a little bit shaky for us for the last few games of the season. Obviously, we've got Newcastle away this weekend. Very, very tough place to go. We've seen their record at home. But in terms of the rest of the team, I think, again, it, it showed. Once the pressure was off, we went back to free-flowing. We looked confident on the ball. We were playing it around, breaking through the lines. Stuff that we just weren't doing against Manchester City. I was very disappointed that they, they managed to get a goal, Chelsea. I think another thing that we need to work on as a squad is just killing these games off. Yes, we were 3-0 were up. We seem to take our foot off the gas a little bit. The first half... Impeccable, really good performance. I don't think we were up to 100%. I don't think we were blowing them away um, and playing our very best football, but we looked good. 
The second half, we took our foot off the gas. And I think Zinchenko now, it's three goals in three games that he's been caught out of position for. He's turning into a little bit of a Marmite character, obviously stuff like the huddles, becoming a bit of an embarrassment. He is a passion merchant and you love it when it's going well, but when it's going wrong, it makes you a little bit of a laughing stock. Granted, he's been brought into the team not to play as a left back full time, essentially, but to, to invert and drop into that midfield role. And I think teams are starting to catch on to it a little bit and he is becoming a little bit of a target. He's not great with his passes. He has been giving away a few sloppy balls. We saw it against Villa where he gave it away and they've gone down the other end and scored. But he's definitely one to watch. I think having Kian Tierney there as a, as a substitute left back is really, really strong. We saw it in the Chelsea game. Obviously, Zinchenko's been caught out. We take him off. We've got a two-goal lead. Let's put somebody who's a little bit more solid defensively there. Keeping hold of him in the summer window is going to be a bit of a challenge. I think he will go. Um, and it'll be a massive disappointment because he is a great, great defender. Great performance by Ma Martin Erdegaard. Again, very frustrating in the sense of I personally feel like when it comes down to the, the big, big games, he tends to go a little bit missing. Granted, so did the rest of the team, but he's the captain. He needs to be the guy that's stepping up and dragging the team through those hard times. And I think we saw it at the end of last season and we've seen in a couple of games this season. When, it can't, when push comes to shove, he can go missing a little bit. When you're 2-0 down against Bournemouth, it's a team that you should be beating. He rallies the troops, he drags the team back. But when it's those big, big crunch games, he does tend to, to disappear a little bit. And I hope he, he takes that out of his game. I think Bukayo Saka, again, a very, very quiet performance from him without trying to sound too scoring on the team because it was a, a great show from them. The guy looks knackered. He's played a lot of football this year. And when they brought off Trossard, I was confused in the sense of why are you not bringing Saka off instead? Give him a rest. We've got the free goal lead, or it might have been 3-1 at that time. Put Reese Nelson on first before taking off Trossard. Trossard's not playing a huge amount of minutes, and he's demanding them. He's putting in the performances to show that he deserves them. So it would have been nice to maybe see him come off a little bit earlier. The title now is in Manchester City's hands. It's not over by any means. It's, a, it's the Premier League. Anything can happen. You saw Everton get a draw at the Etihad earlier on this season and Brentford get a win over at the Etihad. Anything could happen. Obviously, we've got a tough few games coming up. We've got Newcastle away on Sunday, followed by Brighton at home. We saw what Brighton did to Manchester United last night. Absolutely amazing team, Brighton. If Arsenal can play with the pressure off, just keep their heads down, focus on what they can do, Grind out the next four wins. What we need is either City to, to draw two games and it goes down to goal difference, but it looks like obviously it would be City's title in, in that case. But what we need is for them to lose one game and draw another. That makes us winners. Premier League champions. The odds on that happening, very low. Looking at the Manchester City team, the depth that they have. If you lose Grealish, you bring in Foden, for example. You've got Bernardo Silva on the bench. You just have so many world-class players there. But the games that City have coming up with the Champions League in there, you never know. You could see a slip-up from them. It's a bit of a long shot, but you never know. So I think what Arsenal need to do is just focus, keep their heads down, keep trying to grind out the results till the end of the season. And if we finish to this second to this Manchester City team, I don't think anybody can have too many complaints. They're a great, great team. So this weekend, obviously, Newcastle away. The big talking point is going to be the two centre-backs. If Gabriel can come back, I think we stand a chance and it will really, really help build the momentum of the team because going into the remaining games, we think they're games that we should win. Hopefully we see the result that we want to and hopefully we see Manchester City start to drop a few points. But until then, thank you very much for listening. If you can drop a like, comment, subscribe, give us any feedback that you can. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Um, it'd be massively, massively appreciated. Thank you very much for listening.